think about the last time you picked up your phone. You didn't plan to spend an hour scrolling, but somehow time vanished. One moment, you are checking a message. The next, you are knee deep in an endless loop of TikToks, tweets, and Instagram reels. It feels harmless, right? But what if I told you that social media is literally rewiring your brain? That every like, share, and notification is designed to keep you hooked, just like a drug. A Florida bill that would keep children under 16 years old off social media is only a few steps away from becoming law. This isn't just about time wasted. It's about how tech giants manipulate the very chemistry of your brain to make you addicted. This is the story of how social media has hijacked your mind and what you can do to break free. Where do I begin? It's all about dopamine, the feel-good chemical. It's the same neurotransmitter that fuels addictions to gambling, drugs, and yes, social media. Every single time you receive a like, a follow, or a notification, your brain gets a tiny hit of dopamine. It feels rewarding, doesn't it? But here is the sinister part. It's designed that way. Social media companies don't just want you to enjoy their platform. They want you to be addicted to them. They want to hijack your brain chemistry and turn you into a dopamine junkie chasing the next notification high. You ever wonder why TikTok videos autoplay? Why Instagram has an endless scroll? Why Snapchat streaks exist? It's not just design. It's psychological warfare. The same techniques that keep people glued to slot machines in Las Vegas are being used to keep you hooked on your phone. And just like a gambler pulling the lever, you keep scrolling, hoping for the next hit to excitement. Tech companies hire some of the brightest behavioral psychologists to study human habits. They test and tweak their platforms, refining them until they become as addictive as possible. And guess what? It's working. Studies show the brain releases dopamine in response to social media engagement at levels comparable to cocaine use. That's right, your phone your harmless scrolling habit might be chemically similar to drug addiction. Now get closer. I know this sounds extreme, but let me ask you, have you ever felt restless when you don't check your phone? Have you ever reached for it in a moment of boredom without even thinking? Have you ever felt a weird sense of validation when someone likes your post? That's not an accident. That's your brain adapting, rewiring itself to crave these artificial dopamine hits. And the more you indulge, the worse it gets. Your brain begins to expect that constant rush. And when it doesn't get it, it feels anxious, like something is missing. That's the dopamine trap. And once you're in it, breaking free isn't easy. Let's talk about focus, or rather, the lack of it. Because if you felt like your ability to concentrate has gotten worse over the years, you are not imagining things. Social media is quite literally shrinking your attention span. In the year 2000, the average human attention span was around 12 seconds. Today, thanks to social media, it's 8 seconds shorter than a goldfish. Think about that. A goldfish can stay focused longer than you can. And it's not just a random statistic. It's something you've probably felt in your own life. Have you tried reading a book lately, watching a movie without checking your phone, focusing on a single task without feeling the need to check notifications? It's almost impossible. And that's because social media has trained your brain to crave fast, instant gratification. TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, these platforms condition you to consume in bite-sized chunks, fast, engaging, endless. Your brain gets used to these quick fire stimulations and suddenly, anything that requires patience feels unbearable. The idea of sitting down and doing deep work, reading, studying, even having a long conversation feels like a struggle. Why? Because your brain isn't wired for deep focus anymore. It's wired endless scrolling. This is why teachers report that students today struggle to pay attention in class. Why more adults than ever are reporting symptoms of ADHD? Used for adults with ADHD, a new study suggests that they have shorter lifespans. It's why reading books has become harder. Why we skim articles instead of actually reading them. And the scariest part, the more we indulge in this, the harder it becomes to undo. We like to think we are in control of what we see online, that we choose what we watch, what we read, what we engage with. But the truth is, you are not a customer. 
you are the product. Social media platforms use advanced AI algorithms that don't just show you content, they shape your behavior. Every time you click, watch, or engage, the algorithm learns. It studies you, it figures out what keeps you watching the longest, and then gives you more of it. This is why social media isn't just addictive, it's manipulative. Ever notice how, after watching one conspiracy video, your feed suddenly gets flooded with similar content? That's not a coincidence. It's the algorithm detecting your interest and feeding you more extreme versions of the same thing. It's why people fall into echo chambers, why political polarization is worse than ever, and why misinformation spreads like wildfire. And here's the worst part, social media companies know all of this. The 2021 Facebook whistleblower leaks revealed that Instagram's own internal research showed that their platform was harming teenage mental health, especially more among young girls. And what did they do with that information? Nothing, because their goal isn't to protect you. The goal is to keep you on the platform for a very long time. We don't just use social media anymore. We live through it. It's not just a tool. It's a mirror, a distorted one. People don't post reality. They post the best versions of themselves, perfectly curated, heavily edited, designed for engagement. And when you scroll through their endless streams of perfections, what happens? You compare. You feel inadequate. You start to believe that your life isn't good enough. And that, right there, is one of the most dangerous effects of social media. So, what can you do? Quitting social media entirely isn't realistic for most people, even me. But there are ways to take back control. Turn off notifications. Set screen time limits. Do a dopamine detox. Create your feed. Replace mindless scrolling with real-world activities. Because here's the truth. Social media isn't going away. But that doesn't mean you have to be its slave. You can take back control. The question is, will you? So if this video resonated with you, share the video, hit the like and subscribe. See you on the next. Peace out.